Okay, I'm out on my uh, Farron OS Linux system today, and uh, this is the July 2021 build of Farron. It's based on Ubuntu lin uh, Linux, uh, I believe Ubuntu 2004 LTS, if I'm not mistaken. And <clears throat> I wanted to show you how I've got a setup here for Docker containers that I can touch anywhere on the network, uh, accessible via web browser. And my web browser of choice is the Brave web browser. And, uh, and I've got several of them set up. And I just want to show you what I have and talk about uh, how I set that up. I'm not going to actually show you the installation of Open Media Vault or any of the others. But, I mean, I will show you or we'll talk about that. All right. So the first thing I want to do is let's come down to the Brave web browser. And let's click on it and open it. And when it opens up on startup, it uh, automatically goes, I've got it set up to automatically go to a page called Heimdall, which is accessible on my Raspberry Pi Model 4, 4 gig uh, single board computer, which is 192.168.1.125 and port 8085. All right, so this is what comes up. Let me uh, go ahead and bring up RoboForm before I forget. I need to have RoboFormat. This is what controls all of my passwords. Never have to remember any password except the master password. And that's wonderful. All right, so here's, uh, here's Heimdall. And Heimdall was installed in Portainer. And then each of these applications run, are running applications or Docker, Docker applications that are running on the, the Raspberry Pi 4 in Portainer uh, that were developed from uh, LinuxServer.io images that were were pulled in as stacks and then the stacks were deployed after they were modified configured and created uh, docker containers and so these are docker container apps okay that means i can uh, access them here by just clicking a button or i can go to any device i have and i have several on my network i've got uh, an acer aspire laptop running uh, garuda linux which is an arch based linux system I pull up the web browser on that, and I can access Heimdall as soon as I open up the browser. And that's because I've got Brave syncing across the network as well. And so it gives me the same presentation uh, on my uh, laptop that you see here. Uh, I have an iPhone, which brings it up on the iPhone. Uh, I also, with the Brave web browser, I also have an iPad. And so it comes up on the iPad as well through the Brave web browser. So I can touch... All of these uh, in many, many different ways. All right, so if I happen to accidentally close the browser for some reason, uh, I can get that back, uh, close, close that, and uh, all I have to do is open the tab and hit the home button and the home page button, and, uh, and it brings it right back. So let's make sure that, uh, yeah, that's still going. All right, that's good. And so uh, this is uh, the setup, as I mentioned. Now I want to show you, in order to make this work, you need to uh, have a Raspberry Pi Model 3B Plus or Model 4. And then uh, once you get that uh, installed and uh, set up with uh, Raspberry Pi OS, which is the recommended operating system for 32-bit RMHF uh, architecture, then um, you need to install Open Media Vault, okay? So I think it's version 5.x right now. And then once Open Media Vault is set up, configured, and you've got uh, your uh, SMB CIFS shares set up for, I set it up for. A, I'll show you this, but I'll set it up for a uh, config folder on one of my uh, shared folders on the network. Uh, I have a network attached storage. That's what Open Media Vault is for: is to set up a network attached storage uh, solution. And uh, and then once you get that set up and configured, then you need to uh, install Portainer. And then once Portainer is set up, then you can bring in the rest of these. All right. So let's go into Open Media Vault. So let me click on that link. And here's Open Media Vault interface. Let me uh, log in to Open Media Vault. And it's just a click because I've got it set up in RoboForm, which is what I really love. 
All right, so what I was talking about for SMB uh, CIFS shares, if you come down here, here they are. And um, if I've got the shares set up. Here are the uh, shared folders that are currently set up in the system that I set up. I've got a data shared folder uh, that is a spinning uh, one terabyte Western Digital Drive that's sitting alongside a, another one terabyte Barracuda drive, which is the R-Sync drive, in a uh, two terabyte, or, or two drive, rather, SATA uh, external USB 3.0 connected enclosure. And so these are two spinning drives, uh, one terabyte each, so that's two terabytes. I have the data drive uh, being mirrored over to the R-Sync drive every night. And so I've got... Uh, uh, cron jobs that uh, see that that happens for several folders on the data drive that get uh, mirrored over to the rsync drive. Then I have uh, Storval 3 which is a 120 gigabyte SSD drive uh, hanging off USB uh, 3.0 off the Raspberry Pi and then I've got the Storval 4 which is a 250 gigabyte SSD drive which is uh, hanging off of USB 3.0 off the uh, main PC. All of these are being controlled by Open Media Vault. All of these are a part of the network attached storage. And uh, just to show you, uh, for instance, how to get to the data drive, if I want to go over to another work uh, space here and pull up uh, my um, file manager. Let me do that again. Let me actually go out to another one here. And let's pull up File Manager. Okay, and uh, let me bring that over. And what I can do is I can go up here to the top and uh, type in SMB forward slash forward slash. Actually, let me, uh, I think I can just do it this way. 192.168.1.125 is the uh, IP address of the Raspberry Pi where this is configured. There's the data drive. If I double click it to bring up this interface and uh, I need to log into it. And so data pioneer is the username. Let me put in the password and connect. And so here we are. I've got an archive folder, a documents folder, downloads, music, pictures, and videos. So if I click videos, there's one of my videos and all of that. Okay, so this is the the drive that's currently right there. All right. Uh, if I wanted to bring up another uh, window, let's bring that over. And uh, I'll just show you this real quick. I can uh, go ahead and back that up and hit 125 again. This is the R-Sync drive. And that one also requires a login. So let's connect as a user. We put the password in. And there we go. So this is this drive here, which is the data drive, gets synced over every night, okay, to the rsync uh, drive itself. Okay, and so um, if I go out to data, so you can see here that data has these folders. And then these are the backup folders. So I have an archive backup, a document backup, a downloads backup, etc., etc. And so the information from here gets backed up or mirrored over to this one. And so that's how I've got that set up. So that's Open Media Vault. Okay. Let me just bring that back. And once I get that set up, um, then what I can do is let me go into the uh, shared folder. All right, and for the uh, uh, portainer setup to work, I need to have a, con a config folder. Okay, it's set up on the data drive, and there it is. The relative path to it is config. The absolute path to it is right here. All right, and what I have to do is go into another application, uh, which I mentioned called portainer. Let me bring. Uh, actually, I don't need to do that. I have Heimdall already up over here. And let's go ahead and click on Portainer. And let me log into Portainer. And this was installed in the Open... Uh, well, actually, it was installed on the Raspberry Pi Model 4. 
along with Open Media Vault. So let me click on Portainer, log into that, and here it is. Okay, so Portainer.io, this application here is running on the Pi, and this is what I use to create my Docker containers. I've got six stacks, eight containers, five volumes, and 11 images. All right, so to get into this, I just click on the Stacks button here and uh, click on the six stacks. And here are the current uh, Docker container applications that I have running. And as you'll notice, if you go back to Heimdall, um, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we've got Qubit Torrent. We've got one, two, three, four, five. I have uh, six of them, but I don't have Qubit Torrent here. And the reason for that is, for whatever reason, I can't get Qubit Torrent to load in Heimdall. So I'm investigating that to find out why that's the case, but uh, I've got a workaround for that. But I've got another application in Heimdall that I don't have uh, showing up here, uh, and that uh, I do have it showing up. It's called Photo Show, and uh, so Photo Show comes up as well, and that's a gallery, a photo gallery of photo photos from uh, locations for your pictures, and I've got a family album and everything that pulls up there. All right, so back in port Portainer here. For instance, uh, Fresh RSS is my RSS news feed aggregator. If I click on that button right there, come down, uh, it currently says that it's running, okay? And if I click the editor, it brings up this interface, and this is how I loaded Fresh RSS into Portainer in order to deploy it, okay, and create the container that gives me the application uh, that's touchable on the web. So what I did was, you can see what this looks like, and we'll come back to it. But in order to get this image here, it's called a Docker Compose image. Uh, I can go out on the web. I can go to my uh, Docker uh, fleet images. Okay, and so this is the Docker fleet images at linuxserver.io. So it's fleet.linuxserver.io. And if I come down to fresh RSS or just type in fresh, okay, and click it, it's going to take me there. And here it is. This is the Linux server fresh RSS. And here is the Docker Hub image right here. So if I click that link, it brings me out to this website, which is the Linux server fresh RSS, linuxserver.io information page for that particular Docker Compose application. All right, more image. Uh, it was updated a day ago, so this is very, very current. All right, and so if I come down, it tells me some information about Fresh RSS, and if you've never used a uh, an RSS news aggregator, it's great, and Fresh RSS the best one I've ever seen. So if you come down the page here, uh, here's the Docker Compose recommended image for um, for fresh RSS. So what I do is I highlight this information right here. I click and copy it. Then I come back over to Portainer. I right click and paste it into here. Okay. When I paste it into here, it's going to have information that's a little bit different from what you see here. Same structure and everything, but the PUID is going to be 1000. The GPID is going to be 1000. The time zone is going to be Europe. Uh, the volume is going to be totally different. Um, the port is going to be totally different. It's going to be 8080. So what I had to do was I had to go out and uh, get on my Raspberry Pi, uh, SSH into it or fire up PuTTY, and put in the IP address and um, go out and do an ID against this username, which is admin. This is the account that I'm accessing Portainer on which is running on the Pi and so when I run an ID against it uh, then it pulls up this information here I can actually probably show that to you so if I come over and let's see if I get on uh, my console and let's SSH into the Raspberry Pi so let's Pi at 192.168.1.125 and it's asking me for the passphrase, so let me put that in. 
and I'm logged in now. I'm SSH'd into the Pi. And if I run an ID against admin, which is the, and that's very important that you make sure you know which account you're using, okay, because it won't work if you don't. Uh, if I run an ID against admin, it comes up and tells me that the UID is 998, and that which is the admin account, and the GID is 100, which is the user, standard user account. All right. So armed with that information, in Portainer, it's called the PUID and PGID for Portainer, uh, but it's the same, okay? So let me get out of the pie here, and let's go back to Portainer. And so you can see here that I loaded the PUID of 998 and the PGID of 100. The time zone I put in myself, but you can get that from Open Media Vault. And if you go up to um, General Settings, or Date and Time rather, you can see that the America New York time zone is what I'm currently using. Okay, so let's come back to Shared Folders and uh, get back into that. All right, and so uh, back in Portainer, I loaded the America, New York time zone in here. And then to get this information for the volume where the config folder is that I have a, a share, uh, an SMB CIFS share uh, out on the uh, network attached storage. To do that, it's a little bit complicated, a little more than uh, you would think, but it's not that difficult at all, uh, actually. So let me go back to uh, Open Media Vault. And what I do is I go down here to where the config folder is that I created, that I created a share on, and it's created on the data drive, which is the one terabyte spinning Western Digital black drive that's in the enclosure. Come over here to the absolute path to the config, and to copy that information, I right-click and inspect, and it brings up this inspection window. And then I come over here and double-click right click and copy that information and close it all right and then I come back over to Portainer I right click and paste it in here and so that puts that information in and it puts it at stops at the config and leading or trailing uh, forward slanting line okay then what I do is I add fresh RSS which is a folder that it will create on the fly on the one terabyte spinning data drive um, and and then that pushes this information, the colon forward slash config out to the right. All right. So you have that information for the volume, and then you come down and for the port assignment, it has originally 80 colon 80. This is the the 80. Just ignore the 81 right now. But if the 80 80, the 80 here on the left is the uh, outside port. Okay, so that's the uh, port that is seen on the outside and port 80 here on the right is the port that the application sees on the inside so you leave that one alone you don't change the port 80 on the inside because that's what the application is expecting to see but I had to change the port 80 on the outside of the container because I already have something got an Apache web server running on port 80 and so it would conflict and when I went to uh, deploy my stack it would uh, show the conflict conflicting port rather uh, the conflict and um, would not allow it to be created it would actually fail so I changed it to 8180 now you can change it to anything you want as long as it's a valid port assignment not being used by another application on the Raspberry Pi so I just changed it to 8180 and left it the rest of it the way it is. I came down, and then you don't see it here, but there'll be a button that says deploy the stack. Okay, and so when you deploy the stack, you have to wait. You'll get a successful deployment here notification showing up somewhere right up here on the right hand side. And when you get that, then you'll come back here, pull up your fresh RSS, and then come over, and it'll say it's running. Okay, but you it may not be done because it, it has to finalize the uh, stack when it's deploying it out to a container you'll press this button right here which is the logs and you'll come down and you'll see that it says it's done you'll either see a done notification or you'll see a listening on a certain port okay so if it's if it's a server application that's listening on like port 3000 or uh, 8145 or 6186 or whatever 
it'll say listening on, okay, and the port number. When you see that, that means it's ready to be touched, okay? It means you can access it. And so this one's ready to be accessed. And so what I can do is I can come back over to Heimdall. Let me uh, fire up a, a tab first. Come up to Heimdall. Heimdall, and then press the fresh RSS. And here it is. And so it's now loaded. It's up where I can look at it. Uh, I've already configured it, of course, because I've been in this, uh, set this up a while back, a couple of days ago. So I've got local news. I've got a R- Chicago Tribune RSS feed where I get my Chicago Tribune news. That's for under local news. Under national news, I've got uh, the USA Today news feed set up in that. And then I've got a couple, three here, set up in tech news, which is Biz and Tech, ARS Technica, uh, The Verge, and uh, ZDNet uh, latest news set up here. All right, so if I want to select either one of these, I can, or I can just let it show me the default presentation. Uh, but let's uh, let's close these back up. All right. And so if I, this is World News, so it's Washington Post. Uh, so if I click on that, it brings up the news, and I can read the news here. This gives me a, a spoiler or a little bit of a, uh, a cheat on what is in that article. Okay. So this is a Washington Post World News article of 27 August 2021 at 939, and here's the author, uh, Maria Yamaguchi, and here's the article's name. If I want to read more about this article, if I find out it's something I want to look at in more depth, I can come up and click that link. It takes me out to the actual article on the Washington Post. Now, if you don't have, in this case, with the Washington Post, if you don't have an account, uh, you're probably going to be told that you only have X number of articles that you can read over the next few days. Uh, I happen to have an account. My wife does, actually. And so that's letting me look at this unfettered. All right. Okay, so uh, then once you're done with that article, you can close it or you can leave, leave it open if you want to. And then you can come down the page, come down to the next article, and you can just read these articles. If you don't see a, a title that strikes you, strikes your fancy, you don't have to open it necessarily. You just keep going. <clears throat> but if you see something that does, let's say the, uh, let's say that I want to get off of this. I want to go over to a tech news site. I want to go to The Verge. So I can click on The Verge. And let's see the most popular posts on Facebook are plagiarized. Well, let's see what that's about. So if I click it, here's the article. All right. doesn't give me much information about it. I can continue reading it by clicking that button right there. And here's the article on The Verge. So what this does, uh, guys, is it brings up your news to you and brings it right to your desktop. You don't have to go out looking on the web, tracking down the news, you know, at The Verge and the ARS Technica and the Washington Post. <coughs> it's all in one place, ready for you to look at. And uh, when you're done, you can just close it, okay, and uh, go on with your day. Now, the nice part about that is I'm on my main PC and I'm able to bring that up. If I close it, I can bring it up again. Um, you know, it's best by doing that. And since I logged in, it's within the threshold time frame. Uh, I don't need to log in again. Uh, then, um, you know, I can continue reading. But the neat, neat part about this is that uh, this is accessible from any device on my network uh, that is um, available. You know, has a, a Brave web browser or any web browser actually. I can I can pull this up in Firefox if I know this address, but since I have Brave, it's syncing. I don't need to do that. I can get Imdahl com- to come up automatically. Um, but here's the, the other neat thing. I've configured this, okay, so that it's touchable outside my local area network as well. So let me go ahead and close it for now, and I'll demonstrate that for you. If I come over to the new tab, and I go over and bring up my blog, so I go to personal, down to D... DP Network blog. Bring up my personal blog. Here is my DP Network blog. Okay. Here's my blog articles. All right. And so I've got all the articles here. If I pull one of them up, I haven't uh, written an article in a little while, so I need to update this. But uh, this was July 31st. Was the last article I wrote. 
I can also access the fresh RSS feed uh, from here. And this is accessible anywhere in the world because it is, it's also secure and it's uh, data pioneer network dash network.org. Here's a, a menu item called tech and world local news. Okay. So if I click it, you can read the information about it here. You have to have an account if you want to be able to set up your own personal account on this uh, fresh RSS, which I will do for you if you have an account. If you don't have an account, you can read this basic news and then you get what you have. Um, but if you set up an account, then you can, you can tailor, you can even add your own RSS feeds to it. And it's separate from mine, separate from anybody else's in the world. All right. Uh, which is the beauty of this uh, uh, container. But if you would like to have your Technology World News delivered directly to you, you can click here, and uh, it brings it right up to you, okay? Now, what's different about this page is you can't, you notice you can't make any changes, all right? And so the only way you can make a change is you could click on the login over here. If you have an account that's set up, um, which I have to set up for you, that's separate from an account that you set up for my blog, for my blog, you can set up your own account, and then I'll approve it. But for this one, you need to email me or uh, use the, the, the contact form on the website itself. Send that to me, and I will set that up for you. But if you're an account owner, I'll set it up. But if you're not an account owner, I will not set it up. Because right, I need to have need you to have an account on my, my blog to do this. But then you can just click the login here. And uh, you, you're presented with this login page. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get off of this and uh, get off my blog. And this is the Linux server.io images. This is uh, how you uh, pull in uh, the uh, images here. And you come down. This is important, and I failed to mention it. But this particular application, I was able to uh, configure it in Portainer and get it set up because... It is supported by the architecture on my Raspberry Pi, which is ARMHF, which is the ARM32 version 7 latest. Okay, uh, I do not have a 64-bit Pi. I have a 32-bit Pi, uh, and so it's ARMHF, and so I'm able to do that, and that's how I'm able to do it. Now, just an aside here, if you don't want to use OMV, you don't want to use Portainer, you don't want to do it the way I'm doing it here, you can, in Linux, go into your console or go into the terminal. You can uh, highlight and copy this information here. And you can uh, right-click and paste that into your terminal. And you can set up a Docker Compose. If you've got Docker installed on your Linux system, you can actually run the Docker container directly on your Linux platform. The downside to that is that it will not be touchable outside that particular device okay, on the network. Or, or outside the LAN, okay? Can't touch it outside in the world, only on your Linux platform. Okay, so I believe I've shown you everything I really need to show you. Uh, and, uh, well, I will show you another app that I have uh, before I leave here. So let me uh, show you Code Server. If you're a programmer, I'm a Python programmer, and uh, if you're a program programmer like I am, Code Server is a Docker application which is the same or, or um, compatible with Microsoft VS Code. All right, so if I click it, it asks me to log in. And so if I go up and uh, let's see, I need to I think it's just to fill. Let me see if I lost this thing here. Hold on a second. Nope. Okay. I think this will work. Let me just fill it and see if it'll submit and go in. No, it will not. Um, hmm. All right, so let me go up and uh, I've got to fix that problem. Um, that is called Code Server, so let me see if it's available. It is not, so I think I know what the password is, so let me just go ahead and put that in. Yeah, okay. I need to fix this. I need to set that up manually because it's not working. Not playing nice with RoboForm. All right, so Code Server is identical, basically, to uh, VS Code, Microsoft VS Code, if you're familiar with it. And here it is. Um, 
If I want to open up a new file, it has to be where I can touch it. So I can put new file or open file. I've got my Python uh, set up here. I've got my Jupyter Notebook set up here. And so I can uh, access uh, this and uh, work with Python code, uh, run programs, uh, do all of that directly from here. And this is accessible anywhere on the network. So I could be working in a program here, go over to my laptop, pull it up, and it's right there exactly where I'm at here. All right. So that's the neat part about it. Let me go ahead and get out of that. And let me leave it. Okay. And so let's go back to Heimdall. I think I've shown you everything. <coughs> nope. Actually, there's another one uh, called Dillinger, which is a uh, markup, markdown rather, uh, editor. If I click on that, here's Dillinger. And uh, and so this is a uh, a markdown editor, and so I can put markdown uh, code in here, and it will preview over here in Dillinger's preview page, uh, which is very nice. Okay, so everything that you're doing over here, it's replicated on this side, and so you can create and edit uh, markdown files, m.md files. Uh, if you're not familiar with Markdown, you know, if you go up on uh, SourceForge or some of those sites, a lot of the information that's up there pertaining to a particular um, uh, application that somebody's working on or some project, you're going to see a readme.md file. So that's what that is. Okay. So it's basically like a text file, except it's a little more involved. And uh, I like Markdown. I started to use Markdown now in place of text uh, for the most part. So. All right, so this has uh, been uh, Heimdall and Open Media Vault Portainer deploying stacks to containers um, that are Linux Server.io images available through the fleet images on Linux Server.io. And I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. And uh, if you want to replicate this, you can get on my blog. You can send me an email. I will uh, certainly uh, point you to some resources to get started. Have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.